I guess we've got two years, so we're going to have an opportunity to talk about this. But Elizabeth Warren came out with a um, with a wealth tax this uh, this past week. And um, I think we're going to I think, you know, uh, we're going to have a lot of people in the uh, in the campaign. But I think every week we're going to hear from Elizabeth Warren where she has another proposal that is going to be, um, you know, uh, fascinating. And I don't want to say this is radical. We do tax wealth in the form of property taxes. We tax wealth in the form of uh, arguably estate taxes, although that's a transaction, right? Like it's being passed to someone else. Um, and uh, but she's come out with a proposal, you know, a couple of weeks ago for the government to uh, pick up the slack on generic drugs to produce them, uh, which I think is a pretty uh, radical uh, and progressive and, and well-needed policy. Um the the question seems to me to be, you know, will this resonate with uh, the Democratic Party? I mean, are they, uh, you know, are people willing to get that granular? You know, I don't know. That is a really good question. And I, I, I don't know. I mean, one of the things that I think is, is good about Warren's uh, ideas so far is that she's found a way to sort of make them, you know, she's, she's, she's you know, using that word again, branding them uh, with sort of easy to understand uh, at least it, it, you know, on some level, uh, kind of slogans, you know, wealth tax. I mean, that's sort of, you know, that that's something that I think people can sort of grasp. Um, but whether or not they're going to want to get into this, you know, as some kind of, you know, as you say, granular sort of understanding of what these things mean, particularly, you know, we're going to see also some battles between Warren and Sanders, which is going to be an interesting thing, because they're coming at these things from two different not from two different directions, but slightly different approaches uh, to dealing with wealth inequality. And their ideas are not always exactly the same. So that's going to be kind of interesting. But how the public will deal with that, I just don't know. I mean, you know, politics is so much of it is, you know, it's personality, it's, it's, you know, retail political ability. Um, So we'll have to see on that. I mean, I, I find myself a little concerned about Warren, who I love, um, getting too bogged down in those kinds of details, and hopefully, when we see more of her and less, are are you know not reading about what she's saying so much as right. seeing her saying it, um, that it will because she's good at presenting complex ideas in in simple ways that people can understand. Hopefully, that will make a difference, you know, as we get further into the campaign. But I it, I'm a little concerned about that, to be honest. That people are just going to glaze over a little bit at this stuff. All right. Well, look, we got only about three minutes left here, uh, but I want to just, you know, catch people up on where where we are in terms of the Mueller investigation. Obviously, Roger Stone uh, indicted, uh, but mostly on stuff of obstruction. Right. We and there's some talk we're anticipating another set of indictments, maybe with him or maybe with an associate. Um there's some stuff. Uh, Cohen is uh, apparently not testifying in public, although that was the plan before. I'm unclear on why that's happening. And simultaneously, Matt Whitaker says that uh, the Mueller investigation is wrapping up. He thought that he wouldn't have to face the Judiciary Committee, I think, as acting attorney general. It looks like he will because uh, Bill Barr is held up because of uh, statements he made regarding um, uh, whether the president is criminally liable as a sitting president, to, we only got three minutes left, uh, Digby. But but if you were to synthesize what like the thing to watch for coming next week or the thing to look back on, what would it be? Well, I think that what you know, uh, Whitaker's uh, saying this week that you know he, he when asked and he very nervously replied, "Well, you know, it's it's." It's going to be reviewed, which is a very mysterious comment that he made, and we don't know what he was talking about there. Um, and I feel, you know, confident that it's going to be reviewed, and uh, he should, you know, I've been fully briefed, which he finally admitted to, and that it, uh, we think it's going to be wrapping up. I, you know, I, it sounds to me like, you know, he knows something, but I don't think he knew quite how to how to say it, and I, I'm not sure that he's right on that. But what we do know is that uh, Robert Mueller um, 
and he, the FBI uh, basically, you know, uh, it exercised search warrants on Roger Stone, and they took out a whole lot of material. So the idea that they are, you know, close to being finished, I think, may be a little bit exaggerated, and that uh, my, Matt Whitaker, I think, was talking to Donald Trump and giving him reassurance that he doesn't right. need to worry, that it's all going to wrap up, and that we'll look back on this and realize that maybe we were – you know, getting toward the end, but we actually aren't. At least that's what I'm getting from reading smart people like Empty Wheel. <clears throat> yeah, it's it's fascinating. That's the sense I get, too, that Whitaker um, was trying to figure out how to break this to Donald Trump on some level <laughs> and um, had a about as much flop sweat as I think I've seen any public <laughs> official have in, in ages. Um, oh, my God. It was that one thing I just do want to say just very quickly is that I, you, you mentioned why Cohen is going to be speaking uh, in a private session. I think it's because they want to talk about the Russia stuff, but I also think it's because Cohen has made, and what is, I think, a legitimate claim, that he's in danger not because of what Trump is saying about his family or his father-in-law, but because he called him a rat. And by doing that, he's kind of signaled to some very nasty people that he's a turncoat and in in. Cohen and Trump's New York circles, um, that can be lethal when you go to federal prison. So I think I think maybe oh. Cohen is a little scared of what's going to happen to him when he goes in the Huskow. Oh, that's interesting. That's an interesting theory. Well, um, we're going to have to wait on more uh, till next week. As always, Digby, thank you so much for helping us navigate uh, this <laughs> um, Another insane week, and I imagine things are going to get a lot more insane in the weeks to come. Uh, thanks so much again.